So what was it like for you the first time you walked onto this beautiful set that was actually constructed and there's so much that you can actually walk through when you actually saw it for the first time in person? It was genuinely breathtaking. Yeah. Because it had been, and it was the most fully imagined, fully realized set I'd ever been on. You're so often, uh, you, work in a, you, work in, you work in an environment where, as an actor, your job is to respond emotionally to something imagined. Right. And in this case, we were responding to something real. Is that frustrating for you as an actor to be on a movie when there's nothing there? I know some, some of your colleagues, uh, Idris Elba was one, that said he had some issues on Marvel movies where there's yeah. just so much green screen. Does that ever really pose a problem for you or is it just sort of flexing a different acting muscle? I don't know. Um, um, maybe Idris is having a bad day. <laughs> I mean, he's fine. Like, uh, I, 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 to me, it's like, it's, um, it's like being in the theater. You yeah. know, the theater is, is an imaginary space. You have to imagine you're somewhere else. You have to imagine your environment. So it's actually, so uh, green screen acting is kind of just pure acting. Yeah. The whole point about acting is that you're creating real responses to imagined situations. Uh, we as fans, we, we kind of know Guillermo from his larger than life persona when he's at Comic-Con or mm -hmm. at his events like this. What's he like though on set? What's it like to actually kind of work with him over an, an extended shoot? Does he maintain that same level of enthusiasm on day 50? He does actually. He has the most incredible stamina. Uh, and the, the enthusiasm you speak of is very genuine yeah. um, and, and infectious. He has, an, he has a very, um, I think a beautiful love of cinema and it's one he shares. But also, as I've said a couple of times, the thing that I think is less remarked about him is his sensitivity. Um, my experience of him as a man is he's incredibly compassionate. Um, he's uh, incredibly understanding of all the different facets of human nature and he brings that to bear when directing actors. You, you seem to get cast a lot, not all the time, but a lot as, as sort of darker characters, but you seem like you're a very sort of effusive, friendly, personable guy. You, what do you think it is that directors see in you? Do you have like a hidden dark side? Do you hate puppies and Beyonce? And <laughs> No, I love Beyonce. Okay, good. Uh, well, that would be a problem. puppies too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was just talking about Beyonce this morning, in fact. Um, no, it's interesting, you know, I actually had, a, I remembered recently, uh, when I first became an actor, my, my initial casting was, was uh, was a sort of um, was was playing kind of nice friendly, nice friendly people in nice friendly things, and uh, after a while it just became quite. It felt it felt like it was um, all becoming a bit sort of the same, and I wanted to shake it up a bit. And I remember asking my calling my agent, saying, "Is there anything, you know, that's a bit darker that people maybe don't think of me for?" And now weirdly, <laughs> it's become the reverse, and. Uh, I'm ready for my romantic comedy. Um, um, we'll see. With, with your next movie coming up, uh, The Kong Skull Island, there have been rumors a lot lately that now they're sort of building towards this King Kong versus Godzilla movie. Have, what, what was your take on hearing that? Uh, and had you kind of been privy to any of that uh, with pre-production on your movie? Well, I loved Godzilla. Yeah. Actually, I, I saw it when I just finished shooting Crimson. Um, I wrapped in Toronto, went to LA, and I, the first thing I saw was Godzilla that weekend. And it had a real, uh, um, it just was very crowd pleasing. I mean, I was in a theater full of people on a Sunday afternoon, yeah. and everybody <laughs> sort of threw their Going popcorn nuts. in the air. Yeah. yeah. And I think there's a really unifying, uh, they, those films can have a really joyful, unifying quality to them. Um, and then uh, Thomas Tull and John Jashney at Legendary pitched um, Skull Island to me, and it just, Honestly, having spent a year shooting Crimson Peak, shooting I Saw the Light as Hank Williams, yeah. shooting High Rise, some very dark material, I felt so ready for, um, for a heroic character and an action adventure. Um, and so that was what appealed about that. I, 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 I'm not privy to conversations about, about building a universe with Kong and Godzilla, but it's exciting, my God, yeah. <laughs>